My name is uh, Dr. Teresa E.C.J. Pounds. I always like to stress that E.C.J. because when I say Dr. Teresa Pounds, a lot of people say, well, where does that name come from? Is this Nigerian or what? Yes, I am a Nigerian. I was born in Lagos, raised in Lagos, speak uh, Yoruba fluently. Yes, I do. But I'm from Asaba. That's correct. Asaba is like two, three hours from Benin. Um, that's correct. That's clear. Yeah. But being that I was born and raised in Lagos, of course, what I know well is Yoruba, you know. Um, just like everybody else, I left this country many years ago. Um, ended up in U.S., um, originally wanted to go to medical school, then decided to go to pharmacy school. So I um, attended one of the big pharmacy schools in Atlanta, Georgia, then decided that um, I wanted to specialize in a particular field of clinical pharmacy. So I'm a board certified nutrition support clinical pharmacist and you will say, what, what does that mean? Um, and after my board certification, I have many years of experience working in a hospital, leading a team of pharmacists, nurses, dietitians, and working with physicians. So patients who cannot eat the way me and you eat, they have to be fed IV or via the tube. That's what I do, the real sick patients. So, nutrition support, that's my specialty. So I've been in practice for a couple of years. Um, in addition to practicing as a clinician, what really gives me the most joy is mentorship. I've had the opportunity and the privilege to have mentored and trained many student pharmacists who are really out there doing a lot of big things. Some of them are clinical managers, some of them are with industry, some of them are teaching. Um, and that's why sometimes when people ask me, what, what do you get out of te teaching? And what I tell them is, it's not the money. What you get out of teaching is when you have the opportunity to teach somebody and they go out and do bigger and better things than you, the teacher. That's my job. Then I have succeeded, all right? Now, so, mo most recently, what am I? I'm the president of NAPSA. NAPSA is Nigerian Association of Pharmacists and Pharmaceutical Scientists, non-for-profit organization, has a lot of seasoned practitioners, pharmacists who are in industry, who are in hospitals, who are in the community pharmacy, and also pharmaceutical scientists, who again, who are in industry, who are doing research, who are also in industry. Um, we've done a lot of good things and we continue to advance. I guess your question would be, okay, you're a pharmacist, then what's your association with AMPA? Now, I will tell you that NAPSA, AMPA, and another organization they call NANA, which is the organization for nurses, we believe in collaborating together and doing a lot. So I'm here on this medical mission, not as NAPSA president, but as a pharmacist, as an individual, as Teresa Pounds. So we are not doing the medical mission together. We are volunteering our services as pharmacists, as part of the AMPA medical mission, all right? Uh, we have about eight other members who are here. I is one of them. Um, some of them have left, uh, gave, you know, so that also are volunteering their time to be part of this. In addition to that, we also have local pharmacists and pharmacy students who are also volunteering to support the medical mission. So I think it's a privilege for us to have that opportunity to really work with AMPA. Um, why, why is that important to me? Why is it important to me to, to
to volunteer as a pharmacist for this medical mission. I already said I'm from Nigeria. It's my country. I've been away close to 30 years. I come to Nigeria three or four times a year. I started doing that about 10, 12 years ago. I was instrumental in helping in my own field of pharmacy to see how can we continue to advance it. So it's important to me because that's the way I give back. I want to give back to my country. I want to give back to people who do not have the opportunity to, to, to afford health care. I want to, at least in my own little way, my own little field, please touch them. So it gives me joy. Yes, I volunteer my time. Yes, I pay my way. But I also have the opportunity to work with a very good group. Empire you cannot ask for a better organization to work with, to collaborate with. And um, my experience so far in all the medical missions I've gone with them, I've been on about six medical missions with them, and they've been great. Okay. I think that kind of sums it up. I hope I answered all your question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are all very good questions. First of all, let me start with what motivated me to leave Nigeria. <laughs> As a young person, it, there's really not much motivation other than curiosity. You want to see what's going on out there in another country. And I think it's still happening. Young people, they finish pharmacy school, they want to go to US, they want to leave the country um, because you're curious. You think it's better on that side than here. Um, I think that's just human nature, you know. It doesn't really dawn on you until it happens to you. And when you're trying to advise somebody and say, you know what, it's not really what you think, it's difficult for them to understand. They have to express it, you know. It's not really greener on that side. So yes, the answer to that question, I was curious, just like everybody else. I was young, I wanted to see what was out there. And then I quickly learned when I got there that um, it's, 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 it's not what you think that your life here was easier. You had your parents, you had the roof over your head, you know, they were feeding you and all that. There, you had to fend for yourself. You had to work, you do menial jobs, you know, but then that determination to make something of yourself, to, to, to become a professional, sees you through, all right? So you find yourself, you're going to school, you're working at night, you're working during the holidays, you know, and so on and so forth. But finally, you make it, you, which is what happened to me. I finally made it. I became a pharmacist. I did my residency. I became a specialist. And then you start making that money. Then you work for a few years. And then you say, well, this, is, this place is good. Then you start realizing that something starts drawing you back home. It's difficult to explain. It draws you back home, then you come back once, you taste it, then you see, hmm, these are my people, they need me. Before you know it, you're doing it a couple of times. You're trying to get involved. I think this is the opportunity for me to say, if I was not a member of NAPSA, I would never have been exposed to what's happening in this country. I would have ended up just like many of us who are there, just going day by day, not really knowing what's going on in your country. But NAPSA, the organization, exposed me to what's going on in my country. And then I started saying that, oh, I'm needed. And then I started getting involved. And before you know it, I come here a minimum of three times a year, you know, to, to, to Nigeria, you know. Now, but you will ask me, when I come, what do I see? Um, are there any opportunities? Am I happy? Um, of course, the food is the best thing, right? You come, you know, the first thing I want to do, I tell them, I don't, don't be giving me the rice or anything like that. Take me to the, the Amala joint. I want to eat the Amala and they wait, you know? So you want those real food, you know? 
say, yeah, I, because that's the real food. So I love that. So the food is good. But then, I think you see things that make you start to wonder. You go through certain areas, the affluent areas, one person, three, four cars, then you go to another area, poor little children will quite, you know, and that gives you a different feeling. But the feeling it gives me is, it makes me more determined to try to see what I can do. And that's how I continue to get involved in these medical missions. So there's still opportunity there. Now, let me talk about my own field, which is pharmacy. I see opportunity, but I was blessed to be able to be recognized for my field of expertise and given the opportunity to continue to advance pharmacy. For example, when I first started coming to Nigeria, the degree for pharmacy was Bachelor of Science. As I got involved more, I was able to work with the key people now is doctor of pharmacy. So I played a role in that. So I thank God and I'm grateful for that. Um, do I want to come back finally to Nigeria? I don't know. Not at this time. I don't know. I think what it may end up for me will be I could spend a couple of months here, a couple of months there. Um, and why is that important to me? I think the one thing that we still need to work on is healthcare. It's still not where it needs to be. Is it improving? I would say yes, it's improving. Will I see it in my lifetime completely what it needs to be? I'm not sure. But I think we're taking baby steps. We're improving. And who will be the ones to do it? I think it's us. It's us. You can't leave it to anybody else to do it. We in the dance for us, we have to do it. We, everybody, we give a little piece of what they can. And we're taking baby steps. So we are improving. But we still have a long ways to go. All right. So in answer to that question, I don't think so. And the reason is, like I said, the health care. Um, somebody was just asking me, just maybe a, an hour ago, that if you look at the medical mission this year and compare it to the medical mission in Abuja, what do I think? The first medical mission that I attended was the one they had in Lagos. That was under President Johnson. You know, Johnson, he left today. He was one of their past presidents. And that was the first time that the physicians realized, he realized, that it's important we have a pharmacist as part of the team. So he wrote to the president of NAPSA and said, you know, I want you, I want you to please publicize this is a medical mission. I want you to let your pharmacist know anybody who's interested, please let me know. And I'm happy to volunteer. So I was the first pharmacist that went to them, okay? And it was doing President Johnson. He was the one, you know, yeah, he was the one that, yeah. So I've been with them like maybe five, six medical missions. And one thing I will say is that it continues to improve, all right? Um, he, he was the pioneer that realized that team approach, meaning that pharmacists need to be part. So he broke the ground, okay? Um, and we had like three days, and then advocacy, and then the, you know, the, 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 uh, the training. Then it went to like five days. I think this medical mission, the difference is, you know, they're jointly doing it with the, with the state, with the government. Um, I think it's very organized, uh, but nothing is perfect. <laughs> There's always some opportunities. What I would recommend, I would say since there's a surgical component to their medical mission, there needs to be a little bit more structured collaboration between AMPA and the institution where the surgeries will take place. For example, this time it was Edo 
specialist hospital <clears throat> and uh, UBTA. There needs to be a more structured relationship. There needs to be a more structured uh, a preparation whereby all key players are involved and they understand. For example, a key player in this will be pharmacy. And it, and, and it took me to calm down to UBTH and then seek out my own counterpart and introduce myself. And luckily, I'm in no name in Nigeria in pharmacy. So she knew me. So she was she was in our way of the program. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't know if it's making sense what I'm saying. So I'm saying that, and like I said, nothing is perfect. We all have here. Yeah. So I would just say going forward, the key players need to be identified, they need to be aware because it's going to take collaboration. So, so she collaborated very well with me. So that's why if we run out of drugs or whatever, be able to give them until I get mine and vice versa. And the same thing with the Edo, Edo Specialist Hospital. The head of pharmacy department there was very actively involved. You know, so, so that's one thing I would say. But I think other than that, you know, the enthusiasm is great. The passion is great. I think it's well organized, it's well structured. Um, there are some breakdown in communication here and there. That's understood, understandable. And, um, you know, so I think that's one recommendation that we have to make sure that when you're preparing, that you identify your key stakeholders and they are involved, they are knowledgeable about what's going on, so that when you finally get on ground, things continue to move smoothly. Um, hmm. For institutions, well, again, I will focus on pharmacy. That's um, I'm going to request some time with the CMD, at least with the of the bigger institution, UBTH. Um, there were some observations from pharmacy standpoint, and I think he mentioned it himself that the multidisciplinary team approach that is common in US or outside this country is not common here. In US, a pharmacist is part of the team. A pharmacist can freely talk to a physician, can freely review the patient's chart, oh yeah and can freely, if they have recommendations presented to the physician, oh yeah, that's a team approach. Pharmacists are valued. Pharmacists are respected. Their recommendations are taken. When they're on the ward, you see all of them rounding together, a physician, a pharmacist, a nurse, a dietitian. There's still a lot of huge opportunity here. There's still that gap. Now, what does that do? Is that important for the patient? It is important. What is the implication of not having that? It, 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 you may have a negative outcome on the patient. I think the point I'm making is what I would like to see in our healthcare is that team approach, that patient-centered care where the patient is the center. In other words, the most important person in all of that is the patient. The physician, the pharmacist, the nurse, all are like this, and the patient is the most important. That's what I would like to say. Patient-centered care, a multidisciplinary team approach in providing that. That's what I would like to see. I would like to see some kind of, and I'm not an expert on this, the insurance scheme and all that, but my observation is you have a patient, they have to pay for every single thing, even in the hospital. 
they have to pay for the, the, the gods. They have to pay for every single thing. I don't understand that. I would think there needs to be a system whereby medications are available, they are affordable, that, that healthcare tests are available and they are affordable, and that that support is given to the patient. I don't quite see it, you know? And then the other thing is work ethics. I'm not used to the type of work ethics I, I see here. In the developing countries, in the US, if you're employed to work, you enjoy your work. If you're scheduled to work from eight to four, you work from eight to four. Um, I don't see that. Then the other thing is customer satisfaction and respect for the customers. I don't see it. So communication, the way they talk to patients. Get that kind of thing. I don't see that. I don't I don't, you know. You know, so that that sensitivity, that respect, that realizing that that patient is your customer. And you need to, I don't say. So that goes back with the work ethics that I'm talking about. And professionalism. Professionalism, being professional. Know how to talk, I don't say. So so that's, those are my observations, I think. But are we, are we heading in the right direction? I say yes. So that's why we need to continue to come. Maybe they will observe us, they will see what we're doing, and then who knows? That may rub off them. I hope that answered my, your question.